Hello all, J-Dude here, glad to see you all back, and of course, my co-host. For this show, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. This is going to be my first and hopefully what is an ongoing series in reflecting on some of the unsung heroes of music. Uh, many bands, though intensely talented, have for some reason or another been in the wrong place or the wrong time, or just for some reason didn't get the exposure that they deserved. And in honor of their 25th anniversary and their upcoming 25th anniversary concert, I'm going to be focusing this episode on the Galactic Cowboys. Uh, their reunion show is going to be coming up here, uh, a one-off reunion show in Houston, Texas, on Friday, September 13th. Uh, if you happen to be living in that area, I urge you to please check it out. They are absolutely one of the most amazing bands that the music industry has ever known. Uh, imagine putting Metallica and the Beatles in a blender. And I'm not talking about the way that Beatallica does it. I'm talking about taking good, heavy riffs, crafting them into catchy songs, and then adding three-part harmonies on top of it. The results are really astounding. The Galactic Cowboys originally formed in 1989 with the lineup of Ben Huggins on lead vocals, Dane Saunier, and I hope I'm not butchering that name, on lead guitar, primary songwriter and bass guitarist Monty Colvin, and Alan Doss on the drums. They released their first self-titled album, The Galactic Cowboys, in 1991 on Geffen Records. Unfortunately, this would be the exact same year that Nevermind by Nirvana would be released. As much as I love grunge, I really wish that the record companies had not embraced it at the exclusion of all other music genres, because there was so much other interesting things going on in music in that year one of them being the Galactic Cowboys. A fantastic album from start to finish. Some definite highlights in my opinion would be track three, Why Can't You Believe in Me, track four, Captain Crude, and the final epic 10-minute piece, Speak to Me. This was the first album I ever heard by the Galactic Cowboys, but it was kind of after the fact, because the first time I heard the Galactic Cowboys, was in the summer of 1993 when they came to the Seattle area opening up for Dream Theater. At that time, they were touring for their second album, Space In Your Face, uh, another extremely well-crafted album that is just growing on me every time I listen to it. When I first heard it, I didn't like it quite as well as I had liked the first one, but so many of these songs have just grown on me, and especially a couple of tracks like If I Were a Killer and Where Are You Now, and especially track 8, All About Mrs. Leslie. I think I like it. It's got a good beat and you can dance to it. Uh, some really, really tweaky hidden tracks too. Uh, after a lot of bouts of silence, a little bit of that CD trickery that was going on in the early 90s goes on to reveal uh, Ranch on Mars and Still Life of Peace. Fantastic album. It was after this that, for a while, the Galactic Cowboys did end up uh, not really breaking up so much as just kind of dying out almost. Uh, the individual band members went on to other things for a while. But then it was Brian Slagle from Metal Blade Records who encouraged the band and said, no, you guys have got a really great thing going on. We, I want to produce one of your albums. We need to get you guys back together. So the Galactic Cowboys reformed. Original guitar player Dane Saunier had moved on to another band and so was replaced by new guitar player Wally Farkas. The result was Machine Fish, released in 1996. This one's a little more raw and flat. You could really tell that in the first two albums, they had these full production, lush harmonies, and, and the dynamics were absolutely incredible. 
This definitely comes back with a more raw sound. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It was just took me a little bit aback at first. Uh, the the harmonies were uh, much more garage sounding instead of having that produced feel like you were used to hearing. Interesting side note on Machine Fish. They said that that was where they went wrong. They shouldn't have named themselves the Galactic Cowboys because every band in the 90s had either Machine or Fish in their name. So they should have called themselves Machine Fish. The Struggle, Psychotic Companion, and uh, The Arrow is, are, are among the highlights for me. Uh, around about the same time as well, they released an EP from one of the singles, Feel the Rage. And uh, this has a really nice cover of Junior's Farm by uh, Paul McCartney and Wings, if you're interested, as well as the underrated track Paradigm Shift, which is just uh, really awesome stuff. After that came the horse that Bud bought. Uh, this is an overlooked CD in the Galactic Cowboys catalog. Uh, I really like this one. This came out about the same time that I was working in a CD store, and I spun it tons of times, uh, and I have a particular fondness for the final track, My Life, which is actually posted on my webpage if you want to check it out. Uh, but a very, very poignant lyrics and uh, some very personal things coming from Monty Colvin on this album, who is just uh, the Woody Guthrie of our time. The guy never stops writing, and everything he writes just is something that you can still headbang to, but you can sing along to as well. After that, they released At the End of the Day. This was an, an, another high point in the Galactic Cowboys catalog. Uh, they went on tour with King's X, and I did manage to see them on this tour too. Why this is a particular highlight for me is because the day after the concert, both they and King's X appeared at a music store and did an impromptu acoustic set. And uh, I, I was so pleased to meet the band for the first time. Uh, Alan Doss, the drummer, chose what had left after the recording of the album uh, due to some personal things that were going on in his life. Uh, but meeting Ben and Wally and, uh, of course, Monty Colvin was just an incredible privilege. I used to subscribe to the Galactic Cowboys board as Ben, not Ben. In other words, I'm Ben, not Ben. Not THE Ben, but Ben. I'm Ben, but he's Ben. So, he's Ben, and I'm Ben, I'm Ben, not Ben. But he knows Ben, not Ben. So, he even said, by Ben, not Ben and uh, hearing an acoustic version of About Mrs. Leslie was a particular highlight of the show. Uh, but the real fun was when uh, Wally Farkas did his Yoko Ono impression for the uh, King's X song, uh, Walter Bella Farkas. And uh, he didn't want to do it, but the entire band came dragging him out to the front of the store where he performed his Yoko impression for the entire audience, and and there was much rejoicing. You see? Is, is it all clear? Because he's Ben, and I'm Ben, not Ben. Ben, I'm Ben, but not Ben. So I'm Ben, but not Ben. Got it? And he was really nice about it, too. Really nice about the fact that I stole his name. But he's not the dude. See? Uh, so a lot of good memories tied up with this one. Uh, but after the band didn't go, uh, as, maybe not as far as they would have liked. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the reasons were. Uh, but the band decided to call it quits. But before they did, they decided to give us one last masterpiece. Let it go. And uh, this, to me, is the Galactic Cowboys' Sgt. Pepper. Uh, there are just so many amazing songs and so much growth, and it just seemed like as they were hitting their their peak as songwriters and uh, the mesh of sounds were all coming together, there was so much experimentation going on, and 
the results are incredible. Uh, Wally Farkas brought in a little bit of a New Age influence that uh, gave them almost a Pink Floyd experimentation on, on songs like uh, Swimming in December. Uh, and he even contributes an entire New Age piece to this album, which in the scope of the album really works. But the band still knows how to rock, and they really brought it on songs like Disney Spinning and uh, Hey Mister, my personal favorite, as well as Internalize. Uh, the album ends with The Record Ends, which just goes on a glorious eight or nine minute send-off of nothing but noise and fun. And uh, if you're looking for where to start with the Galactic Cowboys, my suggestion would be Let It Go. It's really going to be a shame that uh, I'm not able to get down to Houston. Uh, I wish the funds allowed it, but I wish the guys all the best. More of this. Fans seem to like that. Ben, Monty, Alan, Dane, Wally, thank you so much for the 10 years of astounding music that you brought us uh, from 91 to 2000. And I really hope that you guys. Uh, are able to do this, continue to do these reunion shows from time to time. And for goodness sake, guys, give us a live album already. But definitely check out the Galactic Cowboys if you're into fantastic heavy metal with great harmonies. And uh, you'll headbang, you'll laugh, you'll cry, and uh, and hopefully in the process you'll kiss a few bucks goodbye. So... Thank you all for tuning in. Check out the Galactic Cowboys, and I got a new episode coming up next week where I'll be focusing on a new album by Circle of Illusion. Take care.